Welcome to She Coaches Coaches. I'm your host, Candy Motzek, and I'm going to help you find the clarity, confidence, and courage to become the coach that you are meant to be. If you're a new coach, or if you've always wanted to be a life coach, then this is the place for you. We're going to talk all about mindset and strategies and how to, because step by step only works when you have the clarity, courage, and confidence to take action. Let's get started. Hi there, and welcome. I am so glad to see you here. Here we are on episode 11. Since the start of this podcast, off and on, I've briefly mentioned the model, since it's the foundation for much of how I recommend you do your thought work. Let me give you a quick overview on this tool. Because the mindset of becoming a coach is the most important thing. There's nothing else that's more important than your mindset. Because it helps you feel better. It helps you take better action. And it helps you get better results. And if you're not liking the results that you're getting, it's going to help you to change that so you get the results you want. So let me dive in. When you think of this model, it's kind of like a ladder. It talks about how we create all the results in our life. How much money we make, how many clients that we have, the kind of house that we live in, the kind of car we drive, what our relationships are like, everything. This is something that was codified by Brooke Castillo. She didn't create it, but what she did was systematize and classify the way the world works so it could be used to help us gain awareness of our mind. The model is very similar to CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. I went to the Google for a quick definition of CBT to share with you. And here's what it says. CBT works by changing people's attitudes and their behavior by focusing on the thoughts, images, beliefs, and attitudes, and how these processes relate to the way a person behaves. Now, most of us are used to taking action. We are the doers, the overachievers, the strivers, the goal getters. When in doubt, we go do stuff. But we don't always get the results we expect. And the model explains why. So let me explain this to you. There are five components, five rungs on that ladder that I talked about. And they are circumstances, thoughts, feelings, actions, and results. And the ladder looks like this. On the very top rung, you write a C for circumstances. On the next line down, you write T for thoughts. Then on the next line, you write an F for feelings. And below feelings, on that next rung of the ladder, you write A for action. Finally, on the very bottom rung of the ladder, you write the letter R for results. Let me tell you how these rungs work. So C, circumstances. It's neutral. It's data. It's something that if you and I both looked at it, we would exactly agree. For example, if you stood on the scale, there's going to be a number. Maybe it's 150 pounds. You and I would both stand there and look at that scale, and we would agree. It says 150. Or Maybe we look at the thermostat in your house and we see that it reads 72 degrees. You and I could stand side by side and we would both agree. We see that number 72 degrees. More examples of circumstances are things like your bank balance and the number of coaching clients that you have today. The next line down is T. It stands for your thoughts. These are your thoughts your opinions about that circumstance. I talked a bit about your thoughts in episode two, and I gave you a great five minute exercise to get clear on what's going on in your mind. You use that thought download five minute a day to clean out the junk drawer of your habit thoughts. Or you can use it anytime you're feeling frustrated or angry or overwhelmed or confused. Anytime you've got what I would classify as a negative emotion, you can use it to get clarity and give yourself some space to calm down. So we're still on that T line 
And let's go back to the example of 150 pounds on the scale. So what do you think about 150 pounds? If you've been losing weight, you might be thinking to yourself, wow, I lost a ton of weight. If you haven't weighed yourself in a while and you've been eating and not exercising, you might look at that and go, oh my God, I've gained so much weight. Or if you've been pretty steady at that weight a while, you might look at that number and say, yep, that's normal. I weigh 150 pounds, just what I expected. You see that same number, that same C, with three possible different thoughts or opinions about this number. You would, might think one of those three thoughts. I might think a different three thoughts. We each have our own thoughts about that circumstance. Now, the next rung of the ladder is your feelings. Your thoughts drive your feelings. What you think creates an emotion every single time. Now, you've heard me talk about the connection between our thoughts and feelings and actions when I outlined my Confident Coach's success framework. And here we are again. We're often used to numbing our feelings. And many of you won't have a very large feeling vocabulary. You might go bad, good, angry, mad, happy. But don't worry if you don't have a huge vocabulary to describe how you feel. You don't need to, to make good use of the model. It's a really, really practical tool. You could start by asking yourself, so how do I feel? Do I feel good, bad, or neutral? Each of the three thoughts about that 150 pounds on the scale will create a different emotion. The thought, wow, I've lost so much weight, might make you feel proud. The other thought, holy crap, I've gained a bunch of weight, might make you feel embarrassed or maybe mad. This third thought, yep, I still weigh 150 pounds just as I expected, might make you feel neutral. Your feelings are created by your thoughts. So when you change how you think, you directly affect your emotions. Why is this important? Because your emotions drive your actions or inaction. If you're feeling inspired and enthusiastic, you're going to take a completely different action than if you're disappointed or furious. Just think about the woman looking at 150 pounds on the scale. If you're feeling proud, you might stand up tall because you're feeling good. When it's time to make dinner, you're going to remember you're eating healthy and want to keep feeling good so you continue to make healthy choices. Now, if you're feeling sad and dejected when it's time to make dinner, you might think, oh, why bother? I'll just grab whatever and sit on the couch and watch TV while I scarf it down. Both of these women are eating dinner, each taking action from a different emotion. It's pretty easy to imagine that the woman who feels proud and is going to create results that reflect that good feeling, a healthy, vibrant body, the, compared to the woman who is sad, who might just sit on the couch and eat potato chips and pull the blanket over her head. You can imagine how the results that each of those women get are completely different. Now, sometimes the action that you take is nothing or inaction. We can choose to not do something, not exercise, not drink water, not make that phone call, not invite somebody to be a coaching client. We procrastinate, delay, avoid. All of these inactions create another result, probably one that we don't really want. So do you see how this works? How you think about something in your life. When you're thinking specific thoughts, those thoughts change how you feel. And then how you feel, those emotions drive your action. The sum of your actions creates your results. In the 150 pounds example, if you keep eating healthy, you may improve your overall health even more. Maybe the result is a much better managed type 2 diabetes or a consistent reduction in your blood pressure. And maybe you just think more clearly and feel better and sleep better. Or maybe you feel courageous enough to put your name forward for a speaking gig. Now, if you continue to eat unhealthy and eat more than your body needs, the number on the scale may go up. You might need to buy some larger clothes. You may find out you have prediabetes. All of these potential results 
are a direct result of the actions that you've taken. And those actions were spurred by how you were feeling and what you were thinking. So your results are created by your thoughts. Do you see what I mean? Just like in previous episodes where I spoke about that thought feeling action triad, here it's showing up again. How you think creates your results. If you want to know why something isn't working, look at your thoughts because the model is always working. So throughout all the future episodes, anytime we're talking about the ups and downs of becoming a coach, we're also going to talk about your mindset because how you think, specifically what you're thinking and what you're feeling is key to help you take the best, most inspired action to get the results you want. A calendar full of amazing clients, a thriving coaching practice, having the impact on the world and making money doing it. Really, any problem fits into this model and every solution too. And I can't wait to show you guys how all of that works, including how you sign clients and start to fill your coaching business. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button and that way you're going to get all the future episodes into your podcast app. Then also, you know, it would be really helpful and I would appreciate it if you would leave a review for me on iTunes, Apple Podcasts. That would be so fantastic. Between now and the next episode, I would encourage you to think about this model. Do you see how it works? Do you see how you could use this to understand and help you become a better coach? Hey, if you don't have somebody who's helping you walk through the step-by-step process of setting up your coaching business, please reach out to me and let's have a conversation. You can click on the link in the show notes. So that's it for today. Now, before I wrap up, I want to tell you about my free membership site. It's the one that I created to help you start your business and become a coach. It's called the Coaches Online Business Academy. And here's how it works. When you sign up for your free account, you're going to get immediate access to a whole bunch of resources. And it is all free. I've got a quiz to help you narrow down your niche, a pre-recorded five-day training to kickstart your coaching business, and a whole bunch of other PDF guides and checklists, including 147 proven coaching niches, exactly what to do when you're starting out as a brand new coach, and ideas for how to find paying clients. Every month, I'm going to add more free resources to this vault. Now, you only need to sign up once, and you're going to get access to all of the resources that are in there now and all the new ones as I add them too. It's a super valuable resource, and I am so pleased to be able to share this with you. Click on the link in the show notes and sign up today. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks again for listening today please hop on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. Also, I would love to hear from you. Did something that I say resonate? What else would you like to learn about? Click the link in the player and leave a comment on the post. This is going to give me great ideas for future episodes so I can help you best. Join me again next week for more coaching, support, and teaching to help you become the confident coach you are meant to be.